Okay, in this video we're going to be taking a look at a nice little introduction to polynomial functions. Um, I might want to note that it, this is a part three of three different videos. So there were two previous to this that um, gave you information which that I might be referring to as I go out throughout this video. Um, on this one, we kind of just want to focus on uh, being able to find the roots of our polynomial function. All right, so I want to, uh, hopefully this is review for you um, in an Algebra 1, in an Algebra 2 class. Hopefully you made the connection between um, the real solutions to your polynomial curve, all right, and the roots of the function, when it's written in function notation, the zeros of the function, all right, all three of these things, all right, if you have a graph, you can easily find them by looking at the x-intercept. All right. Um, so sometimes they give you just the graph, and they ask you to find the real solutions, or they ask you to find the roots or the zeros of the the solution uh, of the polynomial curve. All right. So you would look at the x-intercepts. This one clearly has three zeros. All right. Three roots. Three real solutions. Okay. Uh, if you had access to a graphing calculator, you could also just take your equation and put it into your graphing calculator and find it that way as well. All right. But this clearly has three zeros, three roots, three solutions. All right. This one goes through negative three, goes through zero, and then goes through four. All right. So if I was going to write those, then I would probably use set brackets, and I would say, okay, the zeros of this uh, polynomial function are negative three, zero and four. All right, if I was going to even write the real solutions to this equation, I since there's three of them, I would probably use set notation and denote it like that. Um, all right, now, usually they don't just give you the picture. They're going to want you to do this from an algebraic standpoint. All right, so I've got a couple of polynomial functions here that we're going to find the roots to. Here I've kind of summarized your steps, okay? Um, if you're trying to find your roots, you're going to factor the equation, if necessary. If it's already in factor form, you wouldn't need to do that. All right, but generally the first step is going to be to factor that equation. All right, and then you're going to set each factor equal to zero and then solve. All right, so in this one over here, I might note, um, looking at this polynomial um, function, it is in standard form, so it has not yet been factored, so that means we are definitely going to have to factor it. All right, let's go ahead and label it as standard form. Kind of talked about standard form and factored form in an earlier video, okay? Um, now, looking at this nice little thing here, I've got three terms. That leading coefficient is negative. So you can do one of two things. I could factor out a negative x squared, okay? That would take care of getting rid of that because it's going to make it easier to factor if I have a leading um, coefficient that's positive. Or, if you don't want to take out a negative um, greatest common factor, then if I just move everything to the opposite side of the equation, all right, like if I do this f of x thing and if I say, okay, well, it's going to be 0 equals because I've got an equation I'm going to have to be factoring here, negative x to the fourth plus 4x four to the third minus 4x squared. Okay, if I just move everything to the left, as soon as I cross the equal sign, all of these become positive, or I shouldn't say positive, they become the opposite sign. So this becomes positive, this becomes minus, and this becomes positive. All right, so I think that's what I'm going to do because I really like the equal zero on my right-hand side anyway. So I'm going to move everything over to the left. All right, so then I'll have a positive x to the fourth, a minus 4x to the third, and a positive 4x squared, all right, equals zero. I moved everything to the left. All right, now I can factor this. I've got a leading coefficient that's positive, so it's going to make my factoring really nice. I can take out a greatest common factor of x squared. I'm going to take that x squared out. That's going to leave me inside. In that first term, I'll have an x squared. Middle term, a minus 4x. And the last term, just the positive 4. Okay, the greatest common factor that I took out, not going to do anything with that. That's just going to stay right out there on front. This now is a trinomial on the inside, so hopefully I can factor that kind of easily. Um, leading coefficient of 1, so that's going to lead me to do um, just guess and check here. All right, I could try a 4 and a 1 here. That's going to give me a 5 or that's yeah, not going to work. All right, or other factors of 4 there would be a 2 and a 2. All right, let's try a 2 and a 2. I need a positive 4 and a negative 4 in the middle, so I'm going to have to have a minus and a minus. All right, factoring like this, um, you should have, hopefully at this point, have already mastered this. You did a lot of this factoring in Algebra 1 and early in an Algebra 2 class. All right, I am now down to a factored form. All right, so now I can set each factor equal to 0 and solve. Okay, so when I set x squared equal to 0, I take square root of both sides, so x is going to equal 0 this one. 
All right, x minus 2, set it equal to 0, solve it. It's going to be a nice little one-step equation there, x equals 2. All right, and then again on this one, x minus 2 equals 0. It's going to give me a 2 again. All right, so I'm not going to say that I have, I'm not going to list the 2 twice. All right, I have roots of 0 and 2. All right, if you're using set notation, you're going to do 0 and 2. All right, so I've found the roots as 0 and 2 on that one. All right, now if we take a look at this second example over here, all right, this one does not look like this. This was in standard form. This has already been factored. If it's already in factored form, makes it a whole lot easier. All right, so let's note that we are already in factored form. All right, so if I'm already in factored form, I don't have to do step one there. I only have to set each factor equal to zero and solve. All right, now when I set the six equal to zero, all right, well, six doesn't equal zero, so this doesn't give me any roots. I get none from this single number out in front. All right, now if I take this factor, x minus four, set it equal to zero, add four to both sides, x equals four. Now if I do this one, set it equal to zero, x plus six, 1d squared, set it equal to 0. I'm going to take square root of both sides, all right? So when I take square root of both sides, then the square root and the 2 goes away on this side. Square root of 0 is 0. So x plus 6 equals 0. Now I can subtract 6 from both sides. x equals negative 6. All right, so I did not get a root here, but I did get a root here and here. All right, and if I'm going to use um, set notation, all right, I could do like negative 6 and 4. All right, so just a real short, quick way to make sure that you uh, know where your roots and your zeros and your solutions of your polynomial function lie on a graph and then how to find them algebraically. Um, thanks for watching, and um, do keep in mind that this was a, the third video in a series of three. Thanks.